How you guys doing? What is up? Little history lesson today. The material I'm using in today's video is called Isopus Shale. And in this shale is chert deposits. So Isopus chert. I really like this stuff. It has an ashy look to it. It's gray, brown, and black. And I really enjoy finding this, and I'm going to clip in the clip where actually Leah found this chunk. Recently, archaeologists have found that small knife blades and small scraping tools were used on sturgeon and either trout or salmon. And uh, I will put a link in the video description of the evidence of that. It was, it was found using a protein analysis and that uh, can determine what kind of animals these tools were used on, fish, animals, whatever. And um, <clears throat> it has shown that these smaller knives and scraping tools were used on trout, amazingly enough. Enjoy, guys. Problem here, and a little bit of problem in here. Trout season just opened, and I need a new knife. That's it.
So this part was damaged. So when you're doing this, you're going to want to decide what's going to be your main cutting edge. It's going to be this side. Maybe. We'll see. Don't like that spot. Indirect again. I'm just gonna put the stick right on that lump. Just tap. Fixed a lot of it. Okay, finish sharpening this up and shaping it. I don't necessarily need a new knife, but I want a new knife. I'm going to be cutting through bone with this. So the trick with that is keep it kind of thick so you could resharpen it. I wanted it wider so that I could resharpen a lot. This is looking pretty good though. Very, very sharp. Super, super sharp. I'm gonna even both sides. Just make it look nice.
I just cleaned up the hinge of the tip. It's cutting through my leather. Okay. So, I only have like 10% battery left. I'm gonna half this. Use it when I'm trout fishing. There you go, guys. I'm gonna call it Isopus. It's got ash in it. This is a nice little blade, man. Interesting. It looks like quartz. Alright. Alright, guys. I'm going to show you how I make a knife handle and how I attach knife blades. I made this in another video. I'll clip that in. But I will show you how I make, with these tools, a knife handle and attach the blade to the handle. Alright, I am looking for a handle. Now since uh, it's a smaller knife blade, I'm looking for a smaller, maybe that there. I'm going to clip that. So for a smaller knife blade, you need a smaller handle. And I'll show you in a moment as soon as I'm done clipping that. All right, so I clipped that branch. Good size handle, you wanna leave a little extra to haft and to work down. That is not sharp anymore. Sharpen your tools. It took a bit. All right, next step, take a sharp knife. Take the handle and just start getting that bark off. Let's see if I could peel it the rest of the way. Yeah, that looks good. All right. So what I'm gonna do is saw this right here and then glue the bottom. And I'll use a wood glue for that. this stuff what I'm gonna do there is just take a little bit rub it on there and that'll seal it so that it doesn't start splitting as it dries so I clamped it long ways now the glued parts at the bottom and I'm just gonna saw a groove into here about that deep all right so what I did was I just sawed a v-notch about about an inch deep this glue is sticking all over me. Blech. All right, so when you cut this, this side is usually deeper than this side for me, but that is okay. So we're gonna fit the blade into the knock. Now there's a lot of wiggle room in there. So what I do is I'll grind these edges up to here, like that. I'll show you what I mean. Got a 
stirring stick and if needed, a couple little wedges. Now I'll show you what I mean by wedges. You take this and you put that against there. See that? And then you push it in like that. Now this will be remedied. So you're gonna glue it like that. So take the epoxy, push out an equal amount like that. Oh. A little bit more. Okay. More than enough. Take your stirring stick. Stir it all around. Now this is a uh, quick drying, which is what I like. Take this out. So take the wedge out as well. Don't lose it. Put the epoxy inside the hafting area like that. Put your wedge back in. And you let that sit. Let that sit and dry. Once that started drying a little bit, take your leftover epoxy, place it in the notch like that. And you're gonna wanna keep doing this. Now this is only if you overcut like I did, like I didn't do my measurements right. And then you let that dry. See the epoxy there? Let that dry. Let it dry at an angle like this so that the glue dripping drips out and not onto the blade. And then you just let that sit until dry. In the meantime, you can start getting your sinew ready. You're gonna want a bowl of water for this. That's what you want, threads like that. All right, so I put my sinew into a cup of warm water and I'm letting it soak. I also got my pine pitch glue and a lighter. And I'm still just waiting for that to dry up a little bit. Let's check how it looks. That looks pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Okay, we could start working on this now. So what I like to do is wrap the sinew. All right. To secure it. Get it a nice and snug looking fit like that I'll start to let that dry and I will go and get more sinew all right so I got more sinew I'm just gonna split it put it in a cup of water you want these strands get as many as you can keep some thicker and let it soak Any parts that are hanging off like that, go over top of them. And then when you're finished, press down and smooth. Like that. Now I got more than enough sinew here, so I'm gonna do a little extra down at the base, right there. So what we're gonna do with this problem 
So we're going to grind that down until it hits the epoxy. All right. So now that we've grinded away all of this extra, now I'm going to take my extra sinew and start wrapping on the blade, peeling off this extra muscle fiber that you don't need. You just run your thumbnail along it, it usually takes it off like that. Yeah. Okay. So now, start. Wet your hands. Take more fiber. Go right over top what you just did. Wrap around. And anything hanging, we will fix after the fact. See that? Now this is going to take a little bit to dry, but in the meantime I am going to add the pine pitch. See how I'm adding the pine sap? If it doesn't look right, peel it off and move it to where you want it. And then reheat. Be careful not to burn the sinew or you're gonna have a problem with it sticking. Take a wet finger, push it all in, like that. And then you just let this dry, you decorate the handle, you add more glue to the bottom so it don't split as it's drying. And when that is all dry, you have a ready to go knife. There you go, guys. Have a good one. Like, comment, sub. Let me know how you make your knives. Make sure you get this glue off. If you get any glue on the blade and it can't and it don't come off, you could flake it off. But that's a nice looking blade. Alright guys, it looks better when it dries up. It's gonna be a while. So in the next vid, I will show this knife completely dried up. The sinew, when it dries, it shrinks and grabs. It looks much nicer. But there you go. Isopus splint. Beautiful knife.